So I've got a problem, a grinding problem. I've been doing a lot more wood turning this past year and I'm really getting into bowls and I'm trying to get down, not to production level bowls making, but more of uh, speeding up the process of getting to the bowl, the finished product. Now, it's not a time issue. Uh, definitely I want to make a quality item but it takes a lot of practice to get there. Right now I've been using just basic uh, turning tools. This is my bowl gouge. Uh, this is Benjamin Best so it's a good beginner uh, high speed steel uh, bowl turning gouge. But the way I'm sharpening it is I'm using a white aluminum oxide grinding wheel. It's perfectly alright. It gets the tool sharp but it takes a lot, awful lot of material every time I grind. And when you do wood turning, you've got to keep that tool sharp to get your best results. Now, if you're not into wood turning, just wait. This video is not just about wood turning. There's going to be many facets of this product that can be used on other parts of woodworking. Because I try not just to have a, a specific tool. I want something that's multi-purpose. So we're going to talk about uh, sharpening chisels, sharpening knives, and talking definitely talking about wood turning tools. So at the current moment, this is my setup. This is a Harbor Freight Hercules brand HEO 511 grinder. It's 8 inch. It says it's 5 amps, variable speed. So I'm assuming 5 amps is 1 horsepower. I'm not really sure. It could be 3 quarters. But it's big enough for what I need it you do for uh, like I said it is variable speed so it goes from 2000 rpms all the way up to 3400 when you're sharpening you want it to get as low as possible I know most slow speed grinders go down to 1750 but I was willing to uh, trade off because uh, some of the low speed grinders uh, cost a lot more than this and I wanted to start off just basic so this is was about hundred and thirty dollars I think and I just set it all the way down to the low setting. It has worked perfectly fine. I don't really have any problems with it. I did put it on a base. And I've added these. Uh, this is, a, I think, a one-way grinding system. But I've never used it. I got this. I can't even remember where I got it. I set it up for it. But I haven't used it yet. But I've got another project uh, that I'll use in the future. But let's talk about the grinding wheels. Right now, I came with a setup of this a 60 grit. Uh, wheel and this is my 120 grit uh, aluminum oxide grill and this is what I use mostly I do did use this a little bit when you're shaping tools to different profiles but that rarely gets done so we're going to be replacing that one I want to keep this one this is what I've been using to sharpen it sharpens well but it doesn't leave it's still it's a little bit too gritty I think for sharpening to a nice sharp point uh, it's good but it can be a lot better So this is a package from Wood Turner Wonder. As you can see. And this kind of gives it away. It is a CBN wheel. CBN wheels are very good. They uh, have they're made this is made out of aluminum. They have a uniform cutting surface. Keeps the temperature low. And it's very true because it's on an aluminum wheel. This one itself is the 8 inch wheel. This is the Spartan Plus. That means it's an inch and a half rather than a regular inch width uh, grinding wheel. And I chose the 350 grit. I wanted something that had a little bit less, a little finer grit than what I was using before. So this is a piece of billet aluminum that's turned into a wheel and then they add the grit to the edge. So you can see this wheel is an inch and a half compared to this is a smaller diameter but this is a regular inch wheel so you can tell the difference they do make it one inch size wheel but I decided to go with a little bit wider for uh, some of the skews that I'd be sharpening too so what I've decided to do today is we're going to keep the 120 aluminum oxide wheel on but we're going to take the 60 off and put the CBN wheel on this side so for this wheel to fit we've got to remove the guards Now later on, 
this rest, the one thing I do not like about this grinder is the tool rest. That it's not very straight. Uh, it's hard to move. And the accuracy of the turning uh, the different angles is not very good. So we're going to be fit. That was one of the projects I'm going to do later. But uh, let's get the wheel set up first. So let's get all this taken off. So this is the 5 8, eight inch arbor. So we need to get this nut off first. And I can never remember. One twist is a left handed screw and one's a right handed screw. So let's see here. So I can see the threads I think are tightening. Yeah, they're tightening in that direction. So we need to loosen it the other, the opposite way. Now let's see here. I wonder if I can... The only thing, the other thing, this doesn't have a arbor lock on it. The only other way is to hold it from the other side. I hate doing it, because it will loosen the other side too, but let's put a piece of wood in there first before we go with the other side. Maybe I'll hold it a little bit. There you go. Just needed a little bit of help there. The issue is you hold the other side and it's going to loosen the other side as you are trying to loosen or tighten this side so it kind of goes opposite there you go so this hasn't been a bad wheel I think this is what came with it but it's just very for what I use it for it has a very strong grit grit to it so now we just need to get the wheel offset off and we've got to unscrew the protective guard here. I probably need to change the bit here. That's a, I think that's a three. We'll change it to a number two. Should do it. So now we got the grinder down to the um, arbor. Let's test it to make sure that it fits smoothly. And that, that's good. All right. So now by looking at it, see how much thread we have left. Oh, we got a good amount. Um, all right. I'm Instead of what I was thinking is I was going to reapply the offset that came with it. But I think we're all right because we're right here at the bottom of the thread. There's, there's a lot of meat on there. So what we need to do now is we could go ahead and put a washer on it and then re reinstall the nut. But I did get the spherical washer set for 5 8 inch arbor. And what that's going to do is just kind of help align the nut a little bit more square. So let's go ahead and it comes with three different washers. The flat one that looks just like a regular washer we're going to leave last. Then it comes with two other uh, concave washers. First we need the thicker one and then we need to put the flat side towards the body of the of the wheel. Then uh, they says add a little bit of grease. I got a little bit of WD-40 grease here. Just gonna add a little bit. And then insert the smaller washer. See how it's concaved? It's going like that. We're going to insert that to make it like a ball and socket kind of joint. Right here. On there. Then, I don't think, let's see, is that flat? I don't think we're going to need this last washer because our threads come, I mean, our uh, washers come plenty uh, covering to the threads so that we don't need to fill up any space like if it was longer. So let's go ahead and put the nut back on. Now remember this is lefty so we got to do lefty tidy righty loosey. And we should be able just to hold it like that. 
Now let's give it a t turn on and see uh, how well it's balanced. All right, fingers crossed. Here's our light. Stand out of the way. And that seems pretty true. Now the, the noise you hear is not from the grinder, it's from the other wheel because it's a little bit out of balance because I've, I've, it's worn down. So that's where a lot of the noise is coming from. But on this side, the CBN is very quiet. And I'm assuming I don't hear any wobbles or anything like that. Let's turn it up some. And still, I think the humming is coming from the aluminum oxide wheel. It looks pretty aligned to me. I don't see any out of alignment here. So since I don't have the tool rest, uh, I can't really do a turning tool yet, but what uh, another good benefit from this is um, I'm getting into sharpening my own uh, drill bits, and I can do that freehanded at least. And this be interesting. To, that'd be a good test for this wheel to see if it is uh, true or not. So let's let's give that a try. And the other benefit, uh, there, it does go, the grit goes down a quarter of an inch to the side of the uh, wheel. As you can see right here. So when you're grinding and you want to make a split point bit, you can easily access it and have a nice cutting edge right there. So I can already tell just by looking at the facets on the bits that I uh, cut that it's much smoother. There's less of a grit line as I did when, when I saw on the 120, uh, using the 120 wheel. Uh, so it's already a markable improvement. Plus it's taking off less material than the 120 grit uh, just because of the nature of it being uh, not as coarse. But it... Is making great cuts. Let's get a tool rest set up so we can try sharpening other items. So off camera I did a little work. I am testing out a plans for a tool rest and I'm working out some kinks on it. So this is just my temporary uh, tool rest that I've made and right now we're going to use our Stuart Batty angle gauge and we are going to get it at 40 degrees. So now the platform as you can see is 40 degrees from our wheel so now we just need to uh, let's get set up and test it out so I'm gonna do a 40 40 grind on my bull gouge but this is why I'm testing it out um, I've worn this down because it's so short now my tool rest I'm having an issue with I'm hitting here right on the corner right here so I've got to make a quick modification probably in the future I'll make this a little bit shorter uh, but for right now, uh, I'm just going to cut the corner off right here. Alright, we got that corner corrected, so let's give this a try.
how smooth that is. Look at that facet on there. And it's the tip's not getting hot either. When you're using the aluminum oxide, you'd have to be careful and the tip would get super hot. Now I know there's multiple facets on this thing. That's because I was kind of jerky on it. But wow, that looks so much smoother. And we just do a little bit on the back. And we just do that kind of freehand. That looks pretty amazing. Now this isn't a sponsored video from Wood Turner's Wonders, but I did want to just show you what I got, the CPN wheel, the self-aligning washers, and the last thing I got here is the uh, Slick Stick. It is uh, made just to clean off your CBN wheel after you use it. It looks kind of like deodorant for the CBN wheel. But you just kind of lightly, you don't have to use a lot, just put a light, light touch on there and it should clean off any of the metal fragments that have collected over time. So I won't use this now, but we'll give this a, a good turn uh, in the future after we've used it for quite a bit. So if you're interested in any of the products, again, it's not sponsored, but look at woodturnerswonders.com. Uh, they've got some great stuff for sharpening. And uh, this is, I don't know if I mentioned that before, this is a 350 grit, I, I think I did, uh, 350 grit CBN, and I think that's just right for doing touch-ups on different things. Uh, maybe in the future we'll go into using it for our uh, chisels. Uh, there's different ways to do it. Uh, this is just another way to do it for maybe touching up, not doing it all the time, but uh, to get it going again if you're in the middle of a woodworking project. Well, thank you for coming along on this trip. It's always fun to add new tools to the shop. I'm sure you'll see it a lot in the future. Uh, I'll be definitely using it more uh, in my wood turning and chisel work and drill bits too, so uh, it has lots of purposes. So I'm going to get back to working on a project and we'll see you next time. And if you'd like to see more videos like the one you just saw, you can check here and here. And remember the ABCs of making. Always be creating. Till next time.